Terry Flanagan versus Peter Petrov for the WBO World Lightweight title takes place this weekend at the Manchester Arena um, on the 8th of April. Flanagan comes into the ring with Great Britain's longest undefeated streak in boxing. 32 wins without loss. Of those 32 wins, 13 come by way of knockout. He's in against Petr Petrov. 38 wins, 4 losses, 2 draws. Petrov's the substantially older man. He's 34 years old to Terry Flanagan, who's actually more youthful than you'd actually think. He's, he's still only 27, is Terry Flanagan. Flanagan will appear to have a significant size advantage in the ring. He's a very big lightweight. He's listed on BoxRec as five foot nine and a half. Although I never really like to take the heights listed on BoxRec as gospel. Um, whereas Petrov is listed as five foot six. Um, so there you go. Um, let's start by talking about Terry Flanagan. Flanagan is a, a very very good fighter. Clearly, he's a fighter who seems in many ways to be the darling of the hardcore. You know, a lot of uh, people whose opinions I really, really respect seem to rate Terry Flanagan. I think in particular, um, my man Ultra Tech Sports and also I think Iris Tom from my podcast, who are both very knowledgeable guys from memory. They're both, um, you know, real supporters of Terry Flanagan and think that he's a, a very, very good fighter. Um, Petrov, at least on paper, appears to be a step up, but it's still not... A top draw name and I think most importantly from my perspective it's still not a sexy name um, in terms of you know a name that's going to generate hype around a fight and a name that's going to get people more and more interested in Terry Flanagan you know when I look at Terry Flanagan if I'm honest and I'll be brutally honest and this will probably get me some criticism but what's the point in doing this kind of video if you're not going to be honest he's a guy who has never inspired me He's not much of a personality outside of the ring. Um, I don't think his fighting style is particularly enthralling. He's fairly low volume. He's fairly defensively minded. Um, you know, for me, he lacks power. I know he's got one or two knockouts in recent fights against Magdaleno, which was a good knockout, and against Orlando Cruz, but he's someone who I believe generally lacks power. And he's just someone who's really struggled for me to uh, you know I, I don't get all excited when I hear Terry Flanagan's fighting at the weekend let's put it that way um, I think when you've got a fighter who's a very very good fighter a world champion um, but who's got a limited personality who's got a limited fan base um, you know who's got a fight style that may not appeal to the casual fans and to the masses I think one thing you've really got to do is match them well and match them in terms of giving them names um, that the, the opponent is going to generate a level of interest. And I think what Eddie Hearn has done with Anthony Crawler is a good example of this. You know, Crawler's a guy who um, was maybe seen as more of a domestic level operator. But the way Eddie Hearn has built opponents like, um, you know, Ismail Barroso. Uh, obviously, Barroso came over to fight Kevin Mitchell, I believe. Um, you know, obviously, Linares. Um, these are bigger names. These are names that make for a more intriguing fight. I'm afraid since Terry Flanagan's become world champion, uh, I think he won the vacant belt against Zapida, uh, defended it against Diego Magdaleno. There was the Derry Matthews fight. And in hindsight, you know, he made harder work of Derry Matthews, certainly than Luke Campbell and Ahara Davis did. There was then the, the dreadful fight versus Mzonke Fana and a pretty pretty poor fight against Orlando Cruz. Um, and Petr Petrov, whilst he is a step up from your Orlando Cruz's and your monkey um, Zonke Fana's and your, your Derry Matthews, whilst he is a step up from those guys, he probably isn't actually a step up in terms of um, marketability and in terms of name value. Uh, the boxing hardcore will have seen Petrov fight several times, um, but the truth is that the majority of boxing fans won't really be aware of him. And without really meaning to be critical of Terry Flanagan's resume, um, I actually think you could raise a, a very serious question as to whether he's ever beaten a top 10 lightweight. Um, you know, his resume despite having the longest undefeated streak, his resume in terms of the opponents he's actually been in with is, is relatively weak. Um, you know, he's got some domestic names on there. He's got some guys who are 
fringe contenders, I guess you could say. Um, but probably not much more than that, I'm afraid. And I think Terry Flanagan, uh, moving forward, and I'm getting ahead of myself, perhaps looking past this fight, and we'll come on to how I see the fight, because I have actually looked up Petrov and watched some footage of Petrov. But I think Terry Flanagan's really got to do something to step it up, um, either in terms of the level of opponent or in terms of the name value of the opponent that he's going in with. Um, because at the minute... I kind of believe his profile is going backwards. And this bill at the weekend, I'm not sure if Terry Flanagan's the headline fight, but the vast majority of boxing fans are interested in Liam Smith, Liam Williams. You know, I've had more messages about the debut of Daniel Dubois than I've had about the Flanagan Petrov fight. I've had 10 times the messages I've had about Liam Smith versus Liam Williams than I've had about the Terry Flanagan fight. And I think that's something that definitely needs to change. Um, because Flanagan's an established world champion. He's had three or four defences. He's a highly rated guy in a highly rated division, the lightweight division. And he's a very good fighter. Um, so th there's got to be something done in order to raise his profile. And, you know, there's a, a very live domestic scene uh, at lightweight. You've got guys like Anthony Crawler. You've got guys like Luke Campbell, who are in and around the scene. There's other guys who have, you know, big, big name values, you know, who may potentially be campaigning at lightweight. I mean, you've got guys like uh, Gamboa, um, Zlatan Cannon, Richard Comney. Um, you know, and that's not even talking about the, you know, the, the, the top names in the division, the, the Linares, the Garcias, the Easters. Uh, you know, but there are certainly fights that could at least help propel Terry Flanagan's career and uh, profile in the right direction. But at present, you know, I've, I've just got to say that his, his career has, has kind of stagnated to a point where I, um, you know, I, even I, someone who runs a boxing channel, struggle to get full interest in it. And uh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Because if I'm struggling and if you guys watching are struggling, um, how we can expect the casual fans to take to Fl Terry Flanagan is a, a different question altogether. Uh, but anyway, that was a long rambling way of saying that I'm not overly satisfied with how Flanagan's career has progressed. But it is what it is. We've got a fight this Saturday. And Petrov is actually a pretty decent opponent, having looked up on him. And, you know, I've spoken to a few people who know about the lighter weight classes. And Petrov... Um, you know, does seem to be a, a relatively highly rated contender. Um, and I think that's one reason that I'm even more negative on the fight, I'm afraid, is that you're actually putting Flanagan in with a, a decent fighter here. You're putting Flanagan in with by far the best fighter in his career. Um, but he's fighting in Wales, um, and he's from Manchester. He's fighting in Wales because it was Liam Wil Smith versus Liam Williams, I believe, that is the big draw here. Um... And, you know, he, 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 it's not a high-profile fight. So I wonder whether the risk-reward in this fight is actually there for Terry Flanagan. Um, now, as for Petrov, four losses, one of them by stoppage and two draws. He's lost, you know, to be fair, when he's stepped up to the higher levels, he's probably come up a bit short. So he lost a UD to Dazen's latter cannon. He was knocked out by Marcus Maidana. He suffered a loss earlier on in his career to Vitaly Tadsbert, who was 12-0 and at the time. Uh, and he lost a split decision to a guy called Ubedel Soto, who was 13-9. and And there's one or two draws in there as well. Um, but if you look at the level of opponent that he's beaten, it, you know, he, he's been in with some relevant names. And he's... Um, you know, he's beaten fringe contenders. He beat Michael Perez last time out, who was 24-1. and he beat Gamaliel Diaz. Uh, I can see he's beaten one or two guys. He's beaten a guy who's 14-0 and 0 here. You know, he, he's beaten fringe contenders, so we say. And having watched him fight, um, I actually don't think... You know, it's a very different fight, but if you're, you're talking about it in broad, stylistic terms, I actually think there's some similarities in this fight between the Liam Williams-Liam Smith fight, which we'll discuss in another video. Flanagan, for me, um, he's going to be on the back foot. He's going to be looking to keep reins. He's going to be looking to box. Um, he's going to be defensively minded and looking to pick his spots. Um, Petrov, who, as we've already discussed, is a smaller man, uh, more compact, is 
I guess what you could describe as a presser fighter. Petrov is the kind of guy who appears to be at his most comfortable uh, in the pocket. Uh, he likes to swarm, he likes to put pressure on, uh, he likes to fight up at close range, and he likes to throw a lot of power punches. You see a lot of hooks uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, he's a guy who could be a very difficult opponent if you're the kind of fighter who is unable to keep, keep, keep range. And if you're the kind of fighter who, um, you know, is really, really uncomfortable when comp someone tries to bring the fight to you and sit on your chest. For me, the difficulty with Petrov is that in terms of how he likes to transition into the pocket, if you look at him starting around on the outside, how does he like to get into that pocket? I think he's someone who comes in wildly. I think he's someone who often looks to set up attacks by throwing a big swinging wild hook. What you'll see him do is throw a big punch, get the opponent sort of, you know, sell up and put in a guard, and then he'll step in behind that. He's not someone who I've, you know, and I haven't watched the entirety of Petrov's career. There'll be some of you have seen more of him than I have. Um, I can't pretend on this channel that I've been following Petrov since the amateurs. Um, but the footage I've seen, Petrov isn't necessarily the guy. He's not like an Errol Spence. Errol Spence is someone who you see establish a jab, work from range, soften someone up with the jab, then use footwork to try and close the gap. For me, Petrov is more someone who will throw one or two very loopy, wide punches to get the opponent to shell up, and then he'll kind of just walk into range being the, the smaller guy. Um, and I think against Terry Flanagan, that could be a risky tactic because Flanagan's a guy who is good at keeping distance, and Flanagan's a guy who can counterpunch you and can catch you relatively nicely if you're just going to walk in. Um, I don't think Flanagan will fall for these wild punches from the outside. And whilst I don't think Flanagan will be at his most comfortable if Petrov does make it to the inside, I don't necessarily think Petrov's... You know, I don't see Petrov as being a, a technical genius. I don't see him as being... Uh, a ridiculously big puncher and I, I think even if he were to make it inside I'd still think Terry Flanagan with his defensive mindset and with his his youth advantage and his freshness advantage I still think he'd have enough to deal with Petrov um, but I could see Terry Flanagan catching Petrov from range several times in fight as Petrov looks to make that transition from outside the pocket to inside the pocket I think that's something I'd recommend looking out for because I think if in the first two or three rounds Petrov is making that transition seamlessly, then we've got a real fight on our hands here that could go either way. Whereas if Flanagan's able to keep distance, I really think Petrov is half the fighter Flanagan is from Reigns. You know, on, on the inside he works well. He's got higher output, he'll double up hooks, he'll try and throw an uppercut, you know, go body head, head body. Um, but I don't think on the outside he's got the length or the technique to deal with a guy like Terry Flanagan. You know, that, that's that's my thoughts on that. Um, having said that, Flanagan's not the biggest puncher in the world. You know, Flanagan's KO ratio is, is low. Um, and Petrov has shown great durability in his career. His only stoppage loss was to Marcus Maidana. Um, so I'm not necessarily expecting Flanagan to ice um, Petrov by any stretch of the imagination. But I do think Flanagan can catch him hard and clip him and at a very minimum pick up rounds with scoring eye-catching counter punches here. It wouldn't surprise me if this is a fight that goes 12 rounds. It wouldn't surprise me if at some stage Petrov has some success which makes Flanagan look, um, you know, look look questionable. Because I think um, Petrov is, is the kind of guy who is effective when he gets to the inside. And I think at times if he does get there, Flanagan won't be at his most comfortable. Having said all of that, if we look at Petrov's resume, you know, when he's fought the Maidonas, when he's fought the Zlatikanins, uh, he's come up a little bit short. And... The kind of names he's beating are more the fringe contenders. And whilst Terry Flanagan doesn't have the resume uh, that I'd like for an established world champion, uh, I do believe, having watched many of his fights, um, that he is a guy with uh, certain attributes at an elite level and certain skills at an elite level. And I do think that Terry Flanagan, who's the bigger man, who's the younger man by far, who's the home fighter, who has all the momentum... Um, should be able to dictate large portions of the fight from Reigns. I do think he'll um, be able to both keep Petrov off him at times and also really catch Petrov quite hard when Petrov is coming in, especially if Petrov 
continues with that tendency to come in a little bit wildly. And I think that on balance, um, I'm going to go with Terry Flanagan to win the fight on points. Um, but as I say, it wouldn't surprise me if there's spells of the fight where Flanagan maybe doesn't look at his most comfortable. So there you go, guys. That's my thoughts. Um, as I say, it's not a fight that I'm massively hyped for. Uh, it's not a fight that I think is uh, the best match making, especially because having looked at Petrov, he's actually decent. And if he's allowed to get into the swing of things, he can be a bit, uh, you know, a bit hot to handle. Um, so I'm not 100% sure the risk reward is there for Terry Flanagan to be taking what I believe is actually the toughest fight of his career. Um, but there you go. That, that's my opinions on it. I want to know your thoughts, guys. I want to know your thoughts on the fight itself. Of course, I want to know your thoughts about some of my comments about Flanagan's career and how it's been managed to date. Do drop them in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, do take the time to hit the thumbs up button, um, which helps me get more visibility to this video and to the channel. And um, yeah, if you're new or you haven't done so before, do take the time to subscribe so you can check out all of my other videos. One final thing I'll mention, I'm away this weekend, so unfortunately I won't be covering this fight or the Liam Williams, Liam Smith fight or the Daniel Dubois fight live on the channel. Um, the Monday following, I will take the time to watch them and then post some post-fight thoughts following on from that. Many thanks indeed for tuning in, guys. Appreciate it as always.